Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to Shadowrun Returns. Or it could be said that we return now to Shadowrun Returns. Right. So, um, we had gained two karma. And just to be clear, I put it into... Um, and you're wondering, why did I do this off camera? Well, I, I thought I was recording and I wasn't. Fun, 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 fun. Um, put it into five strength. Because we are mostly a melee character. And two into melee weapons. So we have one left, and that's what we're doing. Okay, so we are in the Seamstress's Union. Uh, we got past uh, Mr. Uh, Clue there, uh, the quite polite bouncer, I should say, and um, quite well dressed as well. I can respect that. I can. So um, we're in this VIP section. And we are uh, still trying to find out information about Sam's murder. That's uh, Johnny Clean. The man is dressed like a janitor, but is wearing unusually clean overalls. He's tall, rail thin, and has a cunning look in his eye that says he's more than just a maintenance man. Howdy. Name's Johnny Clean. You knew? Yeah, first time just getting a look at the place, I'll mind my business, you mind yours, I am, I imagine you've seen all sorts of things in a place like this, eh? We'll go with that one. True, quite true, and I keep my mouth shut about it, too. That's the secret to keeping a job here, and staying alive in general. Gotta work, see you around. Hmm, a bit tight-lipped there. Not necessarily in the good way. Noog. Covered in glowing magical talismans and fetishes, the troll does not seem fully of this world. He mumbles to himself constantly, apparently participating in several conversations at once, but with entities you can neither see nor hear. Mutter, I told you, it's not like that at all. Mutter, bring me proof and you shall have it. Mutter, I am honored, your majesty. Okay. Mutter, that was why I said to use mustard instead of ketchup. Mutter, forgive me, Jean, I was a fool. Mutter, he looks at you in the eye, his other conversations on hold. You may peruse my magical wares and see their glory. Ah, uh, okay, so uh, this is a merchant. Ooh, neato. I don't know if we actually want to get any of these. Air elemental fetish. Yeah, we're not really going the magical route, but this is good to... Keep in mind, we'll, we'll probably run across um, partners and NPCs, which deal in these. So, that's great. Okay. So, wait, was there anything to talk to him about? No, oh, thanks, not interested. All right. Anything else around here to see? Kabuta. Mrs. Kabuta. Kabota? Kabuta? Kubota? Hmm. Mrs. Kubota watches you cross the room, sizing you up as you approach. As you get closer, you can see that she's of mixed race, African and Japanese. Her demeanor says, this is my house, mess with it at your peril. But her eyes twinkle with a playful light when she speaks. Kanbanwu, good evening. I probably just completely slaughtered that in pronunciation. Kanbanwu, good evening. Are you enjoying the seamstress's union? There should be plenty for a man like you to enjoy. She eyes you closely. Or is this business? I'm tempted to ask what's upstairs. Business. I just need a moment of your time. But I have topics to discuss. About that. So, Ka. And why should I help you? Sam Watts. I'm looking for his killer. Jake sent me in the room. Yeah. Her face brightens, amused. Ah, so you are the little insurance policy he would go on about when he was drunk. His avenging angel who would strike back for him from beyond the grave. What do you want to know? Uh, how well did you know Sam? Did you see Sam on the night of his death? Why is this place called the Seamstress's Union? One more question. Can you tell me where to find uh, Coyote? I'm interested in this. During the Gold Rush years, there was a census, and the politicians wanted as high a number as possible to gain power and revenue. To bolster their numbers, they decided to include all the working girls, of which there are many, to the roles. 
However, given the times, they could not list the girl's true occupation, so they entered them all as seamstresses. Mm. When a girl accumulated enough money to open her own place of business, she named it the Streamstresses Union, so potential workers would know that they would be treated fairly there, and thus a rich tradition was born. So you are a former seamstress? No. Perhaps when we know each other more, I will reveal more about myself. For now, enjoy the union. Interesting. How well did you know Sam? I knew him. We all did. Sam was a regular here, whenever he could beg or borrow enough union to become altered in some way. Drugs, chips, alcohol, it didn't matter to Sam, as long as he was bent. He was always looking for his next fix. He clung to this place like it was his lifeline, and we treated him as part of the family, even if none of us truly liked him, except Coyote. Did you see Sam the night of his death? He was here, quite inebriated, as he often was. Coyote was working bar that night, and she informed me that Sam was getting rowdy and belligerent with other customers. When I requested he leave, he refused. My bouncer, Mr. Clue, was off dealing with another issue, so I requested that Jake escort Sam out the back door to the alley. That was the last I saw of either of them. One more question. Can you tell me where to find Coyote? Her face darkens. Would that I could. I have not seen her in two days. She is a smart woman and quite dangerous, but I fear for her. If she's dangerous, why well, fear for her? Please, if you are what I think you are, you know. There is always someone more dangerous. Her room is upstairs. If you're looking for her, I invite you to examine it. You may be able to uncover her whereabouts. I would not normally betray her privacy in this way, but she's missed two shifts now and cannot be reached on her calm. It is unlike her. If something has happened, I will not have inaction on my conscience. Here's the key. Okay, so we have access upstairs. And a key. Awesome. Okay, let's go upstairs. Okay. We got here. There's a mid-grade security panel attached to the nearby door. It's set to require a password for entry. Decking 2. We do not have decking 2. Decking. We need to get some of that, maybe. What do we have here? We go on the first one. What do we got here? Anything worth seeing? Anything at all? No. Hmm. Ooh. It's looking here. Looks like Coyote keeps her clothes in boxes on the floor. Alright. That looks like one box, actually. And then a bunch of piles of clothes, but whatever. The stand is littered with action movies and cigarette butts. She's into action movies, eh? A framed painting of the Chicago skyline, done in stylized salute. S Silhouette. Sorry. Salute. Ah. Went out of my mind. Okay. What is this? Cody's bed has a diary with several papers sticking out of it. Oh, well, let's put that back down for a minute. Let's see what this is. Coyote's computer is ancient, probably fished out of a junkyard. It doesn't even have a data jack, and the cracked display is covered with fingerprints. Tapping the keyboard causes the dust-caked fans to spin up, only to display on-screen password. Without the password, the only other button on screen is a password recovery option. Hmm, I suspect we might need um, information out of this diary. Let's do this. Coyote's bed has a diary with several papers sticking out of it. Open the diary to the first paper. There's a... There's a... Res oh, let's try that again. There's a receipt stuck between the pages and a diary entry. Read the diary entry. I came back from my shift to find four of Paco's goons sleeping on our apartment floor. It's getting fragging ridiculous. I want to be with him, with the real Paco. 
but this cutter dreck keeps messing everything up. I love him, but he's totally different with the gang. It's how I make cash, baby, he always says. I try to tell him he doesn't need the cash. I can support us both with what I make at the Seamstresses Union, but he still goes on these runs. With these bozos all over the floor, I feel like he's just seen how far he can push me before I kick him out. I try to be patient, but why does it have to be all one way? As soon as the last cutter was out the door, I lost it. I told him if he ever pulled Drek like that again, that he would be sleeping in the alley. Of course, he begged and pleaded with me, telling me it wouldn't happen again. I don't want to deal with this anymore, but I don't want him to leave. He's the reason I got through all that stuff last year. Got my bartending license, got this apartment and this life. I know he cares about me and loves me more than his involvement with the Cutters. I just wish I could slice out that game from our life together. Slice out that, slice out the fear that comes along with it. Inspect the receipt. A receipt for a Browning Max Power Pistol from Jen Park downstairs with a note saying how big guns on hot women turn her on. Okay, look to a different page. Second paper. The paper has a handwritten poem on it and a diary entry. Read the diary entry. Sometimes it seems like Paco reads my mind, or my diary. Maybe he does the latter. I wouldn't be surprised. Hi, Paco! Ever since last week, he hasn't mentioned the cutters once. He leaves the apartment with a, See you in a few hours, babe, and returns later without comment. I don't know if it's really going to help for us to avoid the subject in conversation completely, but I have felt better without our constant arguing about it. Read the poem. Let's just say that Paco should stick to guns and motorcycles and leave the poetry to others. Flip to a different page. Third paper. There is a receipt and an old photograph stuck between the pages. Look at the picture. The picture shows a young girl with caramel skin and dark brown hair. She has a snake wrapped around her arm, yet she is smiling. The back of the photograph has shadow scrawled on it. Hmm... Caramel skin and dark brown hair. Snake wrapped around her arm. I assume that's a real snake, not a, like a tattoo. Hmm. Inspect the receipt. A COD receipt for a special order. Five pounds of zebra meat from Maury's Meat Emporium, located near Pike Place Market. Hmm. Okay. Was that the third one? Fourth one, right? A receipt for a wall safe installed near the bathroom door, set to a combination of 342-436. Installed near the bathroom door. Oh, there we go. Is that it? Awesome. Broken mirror was hiding a small safe. Input the code, yes. The safe beeps cheerfully in response, and the door comes open. <laughs> cheerfully. Facchetti Frag Grenade. Awesome. I think that's pronounced Facchetti. That's how I would pronounce it. Okay. Right, okay, we're going to do password recovery. Please answer three security questions to reset the password. Question one, your first childhood pet. Uh, shadow? Question two, your favorite musical act. Hmm... I don't know. What is the name of your hometown? We're going to go with Chicago on that. Answer stored. Incorrect. Err. Okay. Paco, Teddy, George, Fluffy. What would these be? Favorite childhood pet. I don't know. Did we read anything about a pet? I didn't. What am I missing? We'll try Paco for whatever reason. The shadows, maybe? No, no, no. No, no, no. That's, that's wrong. That's wrong. Yes, okay. So, shadow is the pet. I bet that's the snake. This is the one we're over. Concrete dreams, curl the elementals, shield wall, starfire the shadows. I'm not sure about this one. I have no idea. I, I, I honestly don't know. Is it, is it going to lock us out? I assume we can just get whatever. They're incorrect. Yeah, I don't have decking three. I kind of wish I did. Okay, we're assuming that shadow is a thing. 
girl. I'm I'm honestly just going to I, I'm almost positive the other two are correct. The elementals. Why would it be the elementals? Hmm. Shield wall. Chicago. Er. Okay, now I'm just getting annoyed. Starfire. What? Where did Starfire? How would we have remotely known Starfire? Or is that the point that we just had to guess? Is that kind of the point? That would be very unvideo game like. Actually, that would be really cool. Alright. There's computer. Three karma. Maybe we should get some decking. Okay. The computer has a basic list of applications. Calendar, contacts, access history, leave the computer. Let's look at the calendar. Three days ago, meet with Delilah about gig. Today, meet Paco for date at Pike Place Market due in 30 minutes. Ah, well that's good to know. Maybe we can track down Paco. Contacts. Coyote's contact list has exactly one entry. Someone named Paco. There's no comlink number or other contact information for him available. This does not seem like a very useful list of contacts. I know some people who have contact lists like this. A quick scan of her recent searches shows that Coyote has been reading a great deal about hellhounds. It also suggests more than a casual interest in vintage action figures. Leave the computer. Speak with Mrs. Kobuta. That works. Let's go. I see we didn't miss anything in here. Yeah, we hit everything. Is there anything else in here? Anything that may be unlocked that we missed? No, not seeing anything. Okay. Let's get out of here. There she is. How can I help you? Uh, do you know Paco? He's a ganger, a member of the Cutters. He is a good kid in a nasty line of work. I warned Cody against getting too attached to that type. They don't live long. Have you heard of Murray's Meat Emporium? Her face twists in disgust. No, I'm a vegetarian. Did you know Jen Park sold Coyote a gun recently? I'd be more surprised if she hadn't. Bouncers can deal with most of the troublemakers, but around here, you need a gun just to take trash out to the dumpster. Coyote has a date with Paco at Pike Place Market in the next half hour. If you would go down there, it might bring me peace of mind. I'll call a cab for you. It should be able to get you there in time. Yambari Kadasai. I don't speak Japanese. I apologize to anyone who does that I'm completely screwing that up. Okay. We're going this way. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, she's the one that sold him the thing. You know, I wonder if she has anything to say about this. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Uh, did you sell a Browning Max Power to Coyote, the bartender? I like her hairstyle. It's hot. Uh, hey, guy. I'm discreet. I don't talk about what my clients or what they buy. Bad for biz. However, I'm sure she would recommend me if she was a customer, which I'm not saying she is. She can't remit, recommend you if she's dead. Did she say anything about what she wanted? Cut the direct, of course. I'd expect no less. Listen, Cody's missing him. Then to find her. Then no, whatever you know. There we go. That's probably better. Whatever Mrs. Koba wants. Kobota wants. I didn't realize Cody was missing. She said she expected to encounter some kind of paranormal animal at close range. I recommended the Ares Predator, but she couldn't afford it, so she went with the Browning Max Power. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Thank you, hot woman with short hair, who said she thinks women with firearms are hot, so you she's either bi or lesbian, which is cool, but... Kind of takes her off the market for my character. Sucky, sucky. Okay. Have to Pike Place Market. Yes, yes, we will. Pike Place Market. You can catch a cab from Touristville to Pike Place Market in a mercifully quiet ride that takes you from probably going to be mugged to probably going to pay too much for your drinks. Hey, that's just like Pike Place now. Compared to the urban wasteland of the Barrens, the downtown area is filled with modern buildings, lighted streets, and unbarred shops, all living beneath the shadows of massive corporate arcologies. For many, these arcologies are home. For others, 
their hulking monuments to where the world went wrong. Famous for its fishmongers, Pike Place Market has been around since the early 1900s overlooking the bay. Now, it's a market for all things, legal and illegal, a melting pot of the haves and have-nots. Even though most of the shops are closed, the sights, sounds, and smells of the market hit you from the moment you step out of the cab. Find Coyote's boyfriend, Paco. Here we go.